Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Weed control is so important and it's really important that you start with a clean field and a good residual herbicide wherever you can. We're going to talk about several different crops on today's program like milo and wheat and cotton where pre-emerge herbicide use needs to be even a little bit more intensive and we're going to talk about some of the options you have on today's program. Well one of the requests we get just about every year is Brian and Darren can you talk to us about we want to plant really early on our farm. How do we get a great stand? What else do we need to do to make our corn pop out of the ground more quickly? We have some answers today. Well, of course, we'll have a Weed of the Week coming up later in the show, and we've got an Iron Talk too, but first, here's our Farm Basics. These days, it can be hard to make the math work in your soybean fields. With the Liberty Link system with Liberty Herbicide, it gets easier. A two plus bushel per acre advantage over Asgrow Roundup ready to extend soybeans means at least $18 more an acre for you. Plus, lower system input costs and more complete weed control all adds up to at least $33 more an acre for your farm. That's smart math. Grow smart with BASF. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about the Ag PhD Field Guide app. All right, so you hear field guide and you say, well, what does that necessarily mean? Well, there's a lot of things out in your fields. One of them that we're going to talk about is weeds. We've got a number of weeds listed on the Ag PhD Field Guide app where Brent and I have gone through, looked at what controls these weeds in different crops, and then just telling you a little bit more about the background of these weeds so you understand them better. So if you're thinking, well, man, I wish the weed of the week this week was Palmer pigweed, Guess what? You can go onto the Ag PhD Field Guide app and look up different pigweeds and get them under control on your farm. Okay, so not only do we have pictures on there and a little about identification and just some general information about that weed, but we have how to control it in corn, in soybeans, and in wheat, and occasionally for a few other crops, but typically it's corn, soybeans, and wheat. We also have control methods of insects, so a number of different insects are in there as well. So when you're searching through, you can search weeds and insects. Well, and speaking of insects, one of the things that we've done in this app, we've partnered with FMC, and FMC has their hatch track available as well. So you can see where bugs are getting a start this season, and you know what? Oh boy, we see this bug is getting a start in Oklahoma, and now it's in Kansas, and now it's moved up to Nebraska. You can kind of track those along throughout the season, and then you can look at what's happening in your particular area too, based on the growing degree units and you know what's happening with this year's weather. The other thing you'll find in the Ag PhD Field Guide app is our daily radio updates. We provide these six days a week just to give you more agronomic information. Well, the Ag PhD Field Guide app is free to use on your smartphone or tablet, so download it today, and it may just help you with solutions for our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Let's take a look at our picks for the championship season. We've got 1034-0. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about this Agro Liquid team. Take a look at this lineup. They got it all. The talent, their players can meet any challenge on any field. The coaching staff, the best I've seen. So that's your pick? No discussions? Nope. Agro Liquid is the team. They're going all the way to the championship. <laughs> Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown, and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. 
We started utilizing the dual react system this year. You can adjust your speed and it automatically adjusts your sprayer tips. So you can slow down and you aren't building up huge droplets or you can speed up and you're not throwing a mist that's drifting. Hypro, helping you spray better. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Avoid the V-shaped pattern of injury caused by chemical buildup in your booms. The Express end cap from Hypro eliminates the dead ends that lead to herbicide buildup and provides easy access to your booms, giving a complete flush between applications. Hypro, helping you spray better. One of the fun things we've done for the Ag PhD Field Day the last few years is have some world record farmers come to our farm and have plots that they're managing all season long. And in addition to the world record guys, some other super high yield farmers from around the United States and even some foreign countries. Well, the first year we did this, we had a farmer from Texas, one from Virginia, and one from Georgia. And they were debating about, well, should the soil temp be 55 degrees, 56 degrees, 57 degrees? Where do we want it exactly when we put our corn in the ground? So our research lead, Glenn, is telling me this, and I go, Glenn, I would love to have the soil temp 56 degrees too, but the problem is I don't want to plant my corn in June. This is a lot different environment that we're farming in where the soil is just flat out cold really long. And it's been proven time and time again that early planting in our geography pays. So you say, all right, the, the guys who are raising phenomenal yields want 56 degree soil temp. I'm gonna plant when the soil temp's 46 degrees. How can I mimic what they're doing yet plant that early. In other words, how can I get that perfect stand? How can I pop the seed out of the ground more quickly? That's what we want to talk about today. Don't get us wrong. We do want to plant when soil temperatures are warmer, but here's the problem where we're at. They just aren't. They're not going to be warmer, so we don't have that option. So one of the things that we've done, we've changed our seed bed preparation. We've done a lot more strip tillage. We don't feel like we need to do full-scale tillage necessarily to get soil warm up. With strip till, even warming up that black strip for eight inches or maybe 10 inches wide for each row, we've ended up with about a seven degree warmer soil temp the first day of planting the last few years. All right, let's talk about what we can do in furrow to pop that seed out of the ground more quickly. A lot of people talk about pop-up fertilizer, right? The very definition of what I just was after, I want something to pop the seed out of the ground a little more quickly. You have to be really careful about what you're using though. Use a low salt product at a low rate, throw a little water with it to safen it also. If you start getting too much out there, like for example, you throw 10 gallons of 1034O in furrow, that's gonna cause you more harm than it's going to do you good. But we are believers in very low rates of liquid fertilizer. Then I would also look at liquid insecticide and liquid fungicide. And I realize your seed already has insecticide on it and it's already got fungicide on it. We're talking about additional help. The insecticide's gonna get a lot of secondary pests, help you with rootworm, that type of thing. But I want you to think about it when you're planting into cold soils, even if the corn seed has to sit there three extra days, that's three more days that bugs like wireworms can feed on that seed. In terms of disease, We've seen pretty good results using fungicides when you use them early in the season when it's really cold. When the weather warms up, we haven't seen as good a gain on fungicide. But if that soil temp is cold, use a fungicide, that will help you. When it comes to fungicides, we've had the best luck with ethoboxum. That's a, a new one that not very many seed companies have yet on all their seed, but it's really growing quickly in adoption in the seed industry. So as you're choosing your seed corn hybrids, take a look and see if you've got ethoboxum on your seed corn, because uh, we have seen a difference, especially with Pythium, but with other diseases as well. The last thing I would throw out is biologicals. We've absolutely seen a difference when farmers have been treating with biological products or as I like to phrase them, natural products, products that already exist in the environment, things like NutriCycle, Heat Shield, 
quick grits. There are a lot of different ones out there. Try some things on your farm. But we have seen when we get the right seed treatment package, when we get the right in products that we're using, we can reduce the amount of growing degree units it takes to get that seed out of the ground. That is ultra critical when you're planting into really cold soils. Well, if you're in the northern part of the United States or if you're in Canada, you're certainly going to face some cold soils at planting time. So take the extra steps needed because you only want to plant once if you want to maximize profitability. One other thing that can really eat into your profits is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. I think about what kind of farm I'm going to hand over to her. About how I can make it more successful, more sustainable. I talk to other farmers, with agronomists and advisors to help me make better decisions. To figure out what's working for them and how to make it work even better for my farm. Because when you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing. To look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line. Then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day. Because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields, and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. Ideal for herbicide applications, the Ultra Low Drift's large air inducted droplets were designed to eliminate driftable fines without sacrificing coverage. Its thick three-dimensional pattern creates multiple angles for the spray to cover the target. Hypro, helping you spray better. Here at Ag PhD, we talk an awful lot about corn, soybeans, and even wheat to some degree. Well, today we're gonna to talk a little about wheat, but then we also wanted to get into milo and cotton that we don't normally cover and discuss some of the pre-emerge herbicide options that you have for your farm. Let's take the easy one to start with, Brian. Let's, let's go with the wheat. When we think about wheat, you've got grass and you've got broadleaves. If you've got grass, you've got a few different options. Probably the cheapest and most popular one is Prepare. That's an ALS product. But your other option is Olympus. If you've got more downy brome or cheatgrass, you probably want to go with Olympus as your yeah, pre but hold, in your crop rotation. Right. Yeah, well, hold up a second, though, Darren. I hate to tell guys to go Olympus pre at all because I worry so much about that crop rotation side. It really depends not only on rotation, but also on your soil. Is it going to be a cold soil, a dry soil, a high pH soil? Do you have conditions that are going to reduce the effectiveness of the bacteria to break that down moving forward. So I'm not a big fan of Olympus Pre. You certainly can use it if you're gonna be running continuous wheat though. Grass control may not be the easiest sometimes in wheat, but broadleaf control certainly can be. You've got a pre-emerge product called Sharpen that works quite well. You can use a couple ounces of Sharpen in front of wheat. It does a great job on burn down, and it also gives you some residual on some of the toughest broadleaves, including kochia. Now one product we've had a few questions about is the Group 15 Zidua. That's real similar to Dual or Outlook that you might use in corn, for example. 
But the problem with the Zidua is you're going to want to be using that real early post. It's not really designed for a pre or pre plan incorporated type application. Shifting over to Milo, there are some options you can use pre-emerge in Milo for weed control. An important thing would be just to have concept treated seed so you can safely use some of these products. But when you think about things like Outlook, for example, or uh, Verdict can even be used in front of Milo, you've got some good pre-emerge herbicides there to keep grass out and also fight some of the tough broadleaf weeds. Okay, Darren, started getting into it, let's be a little more clear on what we want you to use. Yes, you can use the old Dual or old Outlook. Those are Group 15 products. What they do is they kill grass at a pretty good rate. They're going to have some activity on small seeded broadleaves. They're not terrible, but they're also not great. And then they're going to have almost no activity on the large seeded broadleaves. So that's the Group 15s. You're going to get pretty decent residual. You can use them on many different crops. Again, you're going to have to have concept treated Milo though. Darren mentioned Verdict. Okay, Verdict, what that is, it's a combination of Outlook and Sharpen. Now Sharpen, that is a fantastic broadleaf killer with great burn down activity, decent residual control if you use a high enough rate, and what Sharpen is going to add here is really good control on the small seeded broadleaves and some activity on some of the large seeded broadleaves as well. All right, we're going to talk about cotton too, but before we get into the products that you can use pre, I want to talk about some of the products being used post. Now, when you see uh, things like Extend Flex Cotton, we've got Extend, we've got Liberty now being used, we've got Enlist being used in cotton. Boy, we've got so many choices post emerge, which is great because we've got a lot of Roundup resistant weeds. What I want to caution you on is don't just think, oh, well, this 240 or this Liberty or this Dicamba or whatever I'm using post emerge is so good, I don't need a pre. No, you really need a pre in cotton because there are limits on how many things you can put on post-emerge and, and your timings and so forth. You just don't want to put yourself behind the eight ball where now all of a sudden you have solid weeds and you can't even get good coverage down to the small ones. So start with a pre. It's going to help you regardless of what trait package you're using in cotton. Darren mentioned the difference with cotton herbicides, wheat, milo, and the importance of one versus the other. You know, I think about wheat, for example, a lot of people haven't used pre-emerge herbicides in wheat because they say, well, you know, the wheat's going to come up early and choke out a lot of weeds. And to some degree that's true, but I would still argue that having a great stand initially, having your field weed free initially is going to lead to more yield and also it's going to make weed control easier later in the year. When we think about wheat, and Milo, those are both grass crops. So we're most concerned about grass control in the grass crops, it's most difficult there. Well, turning to cotton, that is a broadleaf crop, so now I'm much more worried about the broadleaf weeds that we're going to have in there, so we've got to focus on broadleaf herbicides. And yes, you can use something like Prowl, you know, that's going to help you on grass, but it also has some activity on some of the small seeded broadleaves. And think about most cotton farmers. What's the number one weed I hear about from cotton farmers? It's Palmer pigweed. When you start talking palmer pigweed or water hemp, that is a really tough weed. Prowl does have activity there. I would like to start at least with that. We've got other broadleaf type herbicides available as well in cotton, things like Caparol, which is a group five, same family as Metribuzin or Atrazine. And then you've got Reflex or Foma, different PPO type products as well. So there are some choices. We just encourage you use something to try and hold those broadleaf weeds down so we can clean them up post more easily. The other thing I would say with all these crops, when we start talking pre, there are a lot of wheat, milo, and cotton farmers that are going to have some weeds out there that either they don't want to till or tillage miss them or something like that. So if you want a great burn down early and you have Roundup resistant weeds and you say, well, I don't want to spend the money on Liberty, that's where a lot of people end up going Gramoxone. So fortunately you can mix Gramoxone with all the herbicides we talked about. Just make sure that you're spraying before any of your crop is up because obviously Gramoxone will burn that right to the ground as well. Well, there are great pre-emerge herbicide options in many, many crops. We talked about a few different crops today, but we didn't specifically mention our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. The weed of the week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, agriculture division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. 
reduced drift, and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Our Weed of the Week is a warm season annual grass. It's Amazon Sprangletop. Amazon Sprangletop is an erect and spreading warm season grass. The leaves are a little darker shade of green and they've got a prominent white midrib. I think if you're raising rice, you're very familiar what Amazon Sprangletop looks like. It likes those wet soils, it likes good fertility, and oftentimes you see that whitish seed head sticking out above a crop and resembling a Christmas tree in shape. All right, you mentioned rice. What are we going to do in terms of control in rice for Amazon Sprangletop? Well, in rice, your best option would probably be to plant clear field rice, and you could use something like New Path to try to control it, uh, or you could use something like Clincher if you had conventional rice. Well, we have seen ACCase resistance, so it does get concerning when you think about wheat, for example, and a lot of ACCase use like Axial. Okay, so if you have ACCase resistant sprangle top, you'd probably want to go with Prepare that's an ALS Pre, and you could use the same chemical family post, actually the same product even, same active ingredient, it's Everest 3.0 if you wanted to go post-emerge. In soybeans, you've got some good options. You can start with a three pre-program down. I really like the yellows on, on Amazon Sprangle Top, so things like Treflan or Prowl would be good options. Post-emerge, you have a lot of different grass killers or volunteer corn killers that would work on Amazon Sprangle Top, but if you've got Roundup Ready soybeans or Liberty Link soybeans, you got two great options there with Roundup and Liberty. When it comes to corn, I would suggest starting with a Group 15, something like Surpass, Harness, Dual, Outlook, Zidua, but this is a warm season grass. So whenever we start thinking warm season grasses, they're gonna come a little bit later, your residual is gonna to start to die out, and these products aren't the greatest anyway. So I'd rather see you have Roundup corn or Liberty corn, so that way you can spray one of those options post. If you're gonna go with Accent, that grass better be awfully small, or you're not gonna get a whole lot of control out of the Accent. Well, Amazon Sprangletop can be a really tough weed and a big yield robber, so get it under control with a two-pass pre-emerge followed by post-emerge control program. It's all time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. And how about the big man, Pro Germinator? Yeah, this guy's got some experience in the field. But look at the stats. You can't argue with those kind of results. You're right. I know a lot of teams wishing their phosphorus player had those kind of numbers. Right, but this guy's not just phosphorus. He's got the nitrogen, the potassium, the micros. All those just add up to his phosphorus game. And his game is good. Invisible, invasive, underestimated. Nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm, because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. 
At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We counted. Why? Because we designed the Tiger Mate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on. Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. The fall of 2018 was really tough in a lot of ways. The number of farmers who were not able to get soil samples pulled in the northern U.S. and Canada is going to make it a challenge to update fertility recommendations. Spring soil sampling is the topic of today's Iron Talk. This winter, the big discussion in farming was geared around reducing costs and improving profit per bushel. The biggest variable input cost on most farms is fertility additions. If you're fired up about lowering your fertilizer investment but don't have great data to base your decisions on, spring soil sampling is a must. If you're used to doing your sampling in the fall, there are additional considerations you need to keep in mind for sampling soil in the spring. It's not too complicated, though. Just use some common sense. Soil sampling is pretty straightforward, especially with helpful tools like the Ag PhD Soils app at your disposal. Just set up your account and pick the fields online. Then head to the field and get your samples pulled. However, if your soil is just thawing out, you need to be prepared for that. You can pull samples from frozen ground, but it takes more work. Let's start with the assumption that your ground is thawed, but maybe a little wet or sticky. The best ideas I've heard about dealing with that situation are to either A, Bring along a pail of water so you can dip the probe in and wash it off as needed. B, and this is what I commonly do, use WD-40 and spray your probe as often as needed to keep soil from sticking. Or C, use a wood dowel system, this is something I also do, to push the soil out of the probe if you're having trouble. Even if the sample is just a little bit on the wet side, you don't need to dry it before sending it in. Just use the sample bags provided by your soils lab of choice and send them in immediately to avoid mold developing in the bags. The next hurdle you may have is if tillage has already been done. If the field's uneven, it's hard to get an accurate measurement from each of the first six inches in your soil, assuming that you're doing a six inch soil sample. The best suggestion here is to simply level off the areas where you're sampling before you pull your cores. Another challenge with tillage is that there is a lot of fluff in the soil and you may not be filling the probe just right if you put it only six inches in the ground. Now, if the tillage was done in the fall, it's generally settled out by spring, so this shouldn't be a problem. However, if spring tillage is going to be done, make every effort to get the samples pulled before the tillage pass to give you the most accurate representation of your soil. The other challenge with spring soil sampling is simply having the time to do it without delaying your planting. Hopefully the weather cooperates with some warm days a few weeks ahead of planting to get sampling done, receive the results from the lab, make the recommendations, and apply the needed fertility. If not, you can still pull samples after planting and utilize side dress and foliar fertilizer treatments to make up for any nutrient shortfalls left after planting. Spring soil sampling can be a little challenging depending on the weather and field conditions, but it still can be very accurate and helpful for making the best fertility recommendations for this year's crop. Be prepared before you head to the field, and spring soil sampling should go smoothly. Who knows, you may even like it better than pulling samples in the busy harvest season. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. That's all the time we have for our show today, but before we go, we'd encourage you to check out the Ag PhD radio show on Sirius XM 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.